What's up guys, in today's video I'd love to share with you an idea, a single idea which helped a lot of my students to gain several hundred rating points and to get to the level of 2000 even if they couldn't do it prior to that for years. So here's the thing, usually when you start learning chess, you learn like all the basics that you gotta develop pieces, control the central, blah blah, right? But after that, usually what happens is that you're stuck in a certain rating level and you can't progress because your results are inconsistent. Sometimes you can play a great game, but then you can lose to a weaker opponent and blunder a piece, and because of that inconsistency, you can't steadily move up. So here is one of the reasons why this might be the case for you, or at least it's the case for a lot of players. Now, here's a common position of an opening. So here, black play d5, which looks like a very natural move to play, right? They wanna open up the bishop, they wanna control the center. They seemingly follow all the classical chess rules. However, there's one thing which black misses here, and here's the deal. The rule suggests that if you want to open up the position, you gotta make sure that you are ready, that your pieces are more active than the pieces of your opponent, and that your king is safe. And that is the thing that black missed right here in this game by playing pawn to d5. Now, anyway, let's see what happened next. Now, if you're a cool guy or girl and you're a subscriber of this channel, then you know that to take is a mistake and you shouldn't do this. You should maintain the pressure and increase the pressure. And why did that? By going bishop to g5. He was not a subscriber of our channel, I gotta admit. David Bronstein lived many years ago, <laughs> but he was a great player, so he understood this rule himself. So bishop g5 pins the knight, puts more pressure down here. Now black needs to recapture, but now you can centralize your knight and put pressure here against this knight. Now, black felt uncomfortable because of this pressure, plus white can possibly bring the rook over here and attack the queen as well. Black decided that something is not going right, but then they figure out that they can play queen e7 and actually use the counter pain. But white boldly ignored that and just castled. Black thought, okay, I can't take it with the knight because it's pinned. Then I'll lose the queen. However, I can just win the knight by taking this one. And white played. Can you find the move? It's rook to d8, sacrificing the rook, and it can be captured by the knight because the knight is pinned. Therefore, black has to move the king, but now the knight is pinned yet again. And white can win the queen over here, black can't recapture because the knight is pinned, which means that white gained the material advantage, they just grabbed the queen, plus the king is now deadly exposed and black just resigned. While analyzing games like that, people usually pay attention to a blunder or to that tactical shot rook to d8, you know, which really won the game for white. However, I would argue that the real reason was actually right here when black played the move pawn to d5. And that preceded the blunder and kind of pushed black into that deadly territory where it was very difficult for Blam for them to find proper moves because they had to face these multiple threats when they're underdeveloped and their king is not safe. And although Stockfish might be able to defend this position, for a human it's really difficult. Here's another example, it is black to move. How would you play here if you're a black? In the game, black played the move pawn f5 because that's the standard move in the King's Indian defense and they wanted to attack on the king side, maybe they were hoping for g5, f4 and capturing this bishop, something like this. However, here's what happened, white traded and after the exchange they played bishop h5 and it turned out that the queen is trapped and black has to give up some material and they lost the game pretty quickly after that. Again, looks like a sudden blunder, but if you think about this, it's not all that sudden, because actually in the starting position, you know, all these pieces are not developed yet. This knight is ugly, right, it's blocking the bishop out. The rest of the pieces are also not very active, they're all on the last two ranks, and it's kind of awkward. So it's not a coincidence that black blundered something under these circumstances. Moreover, if let's say we take this move back and we assume that g takes f5 was a blunder. And what if black took with the rook? Well, still white could play, you know, bishop g4, bishop d3, knight e4, they've got a lot of forward moves which would put pressure. For instance, bishop d3 is also pretty annoying. Attacking the rook if it goes back, white can now play queen c2, and there is no way to defend this pawn. If it moves back, they're gonna lose this knight over here on h7, and white again wins the game. So you see that it's not just a coincidence that black blundered something. It happens for the same reason. Black decided to break open the position with the move pawn f5, when white was more active than black, and therefore, in principle, that was the wrong move to play. Black should have just do something to rearrange their pieces and put them to a better squares. All right, here's another very common example. We go right into the most common chess opening position, and at this point, lots of players play the move pawn to d5. And it's just the same as to what we talked about before. The move d5 in itself is not a blunder. 
However, in principle, black opens up the position when they're mostly underdeveloped and their kin is still centralized. So it just puts black in this shaky ground and this idea often precedes blunder on one of the following moves. Let's see what happened here. White traded and castled. Now black realized that white wants to play rook e1 and attack this pawn. Now what can black do? They can't play bishop d6 to defend it because that would drop the knight on d5. So that would be a blunder. They instead decided to go bishop g4 pinning this knight. White still played rook e1, putting pressure and black still felt uncomfortable because white can maybe play h3, kick away this bishop and then still try to take. They decided to protect the pawn like overprotected with f6, thinking that now it's rock solid over here. However, white sacrificed the queen with knight takes e5 anyway. Turns out that although the queen is attacked, after this white's got this knight takes c6, beautiful counter blow with a check to the king and attack of the queen. And at the end of the day, as we keep erasing material, let's say we take here, white takes here, and as we count pieces, we've got three minor pieces versus two, which means that white is up a piece and a pawn and has a winning position. Here's another good example, which is actually a pretty great opening for you to play, very aggressive one and very interesting. The Danish Gambit, where you sacrifice a couple of pawns for your quick development. And here black usually goes bishop b4, check to your king, you cover it, then they play knight f6, attacking this pawn and hoping to castle. And the tricky move that white has here is just allowing black to capture this pawn, which black often accepts because they don't see any immediate danger and why not to take this pawn. Plus, if they don't take it, they think, oh, maybe this pawn can go forward and attack the knight anyway, so let's just take it. Now the knight is pinned, therefore white has nothing to do, white is just losing the pawn. Now, here's the point. You should not open a position when your opponent is more active. And that's the mistake which black makes here. I certainly don't expect black to calculate all the consequences of this move. Like white castles, perhaps black takes here, white recaptures, black castles, and of course nobody can calculate what's gonna happen after that. But you should know in principle that you should not open a position when you are not ready, when your opponent is more active. And by saying opening of a position, I usually mean playing a pawn move or an exchange of pawns somewhere around the center of the board. Or in this case, it was just a capture of the pawn. Because if you clear pawns from the center files, that opens a whole lot of lines and diagonals for your opponent's pieces and they can start moving in any direction they want, which will inevitably create a lot of attacking opportunities for him. And it's exactly what happens in this game. Black couldn't calculate what would happen next, but white now just has a bunch of moves which would move forward and create certain threats. And here after bishop c5, white played a creative move, knight of 6 check, sacrificing the knight, supported by the bishop by the way, so black has to ruin their pawn structure, but now the king is exposed and white starts using all these open lines. So king goes to the corner, now queen h4, this time we hit this pawn twice, like decided to def defend it, and here comes bishop d3, black just resigned, they can't defend against queen takes h7 on the next move. And by the way, little but important nuance, if black did not take this pawn on e4, and let's imagine that white has a pawn on e4, this whole thing would not work, because the diagonal would be closed, but because the diagonal is open, white is free to attack, and that's how he won the game. On a side note, the Danish Gambit is really a very cool and aggressive opening. If you are interested in playing this, check out this my video about the Danish Gambit. Or if you want to learn the main rule to become a strong attacking player, check out this free masterclass over there.